We're taking the dogs for a walk and we're going to show you where we almost lost Monty the other day. I'm Randy and I'm Diane and we're Zephyr Travels and this week we're coming to you from Holder Mine Campground in the Florida State Forest and this is the second uh, state forest campground we've stayed at in the last couple of weeks we were previously at Silver Lake and so I'm gonna take you back to Silver Lake and show you that campground first and then we'll come back here and we'll tell you about this campground this is our campsite here at Silver Lake uh, campground and as you can see it's really nice it's very spacious it's also very well landscaped we've got these really nice um, split rail fences all around the campsite the parking area is gravel which I like which is it's, it's nice it's better than sand and such dirt it is also nicely uh, curved around it so you know exactly where you park the hookups are um, Electric and water, the electric is uh, 20 amp, 30 amp, and 50 amp, so something for everybody there. They do have a dump station here, uh, actually two dump stations on the way out, which is good. The Probably the downside to this campground is there is some noise from Interstate 75, which is right over there. Now this one's not too bad because there's a good tree cover between us and Interstate 75. Some of the other campsites down in that end are a lot closer. They don't have as many trees, so it is a little bit louder. But for the most part, we really it really didn't bother us. You do hear it when you're sitting when you're outside. It's kind of just a background noise. When you're in the trailer, you don't hear it at all. Um, at night, the traffic dies down to the point that it's dead quiet. It's, it's pretty workable. If this is an issue, there is a second um, campground here. I think it's Cypress and it's farther back into the woods and it is much quieter there. It's still on the lake, which is one of the nice perks about this campground. The lake is right over here. Um, so either campground is good if you're coming here. Um, take your pick. I would say that the Cypress campground is a little bit more wooded. This campground is a little bit more open, but it still has a lot of nice trees around it. So that could pay, play into what you're looking at at what time of year you're coming here. If you're here like we are and it's winter time and the temperatures aren't too hot, this is a good campground to be in because you get a, you know, a nice amount of sun. If temperatures are higher and you need some shade, then the other campground would be good. I mentioned that there's a lake here. Uh, Silver Lake, I think it's Silver Lake because it's a Silver Lake campground, is right over here. There is a boat launch area in this campground that you can launch a boat. Uh, kayaks or whatever you might have. It looks like it's a good lake for kayaking. We haven't gone kayaking there. We're gonna, I'm going to confess to you guys. We left our life jackets home. So we've just recently bought some new life jackets and we haven't had a chance to get them out and use them, but we probably will get the kayak out in the next few days. Um, whether it's here or at our next, we may come back here and kayak or if there's kayaking at our next campground, we will try it there. Today we're leaving our campsite here at Silver Lake and we're heading over to Holder Mine and Holder Mine is still within the same state forest area of which which La Coochie I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right I am hopefully I am if I'm not you guys leave me a comment and tell me how to pronounce it I'd appreciate that uh, we're gonna cut back to this video once we get there and tell you about that campground welcome back guys to Holder Mine Campground, and we've been here for a week, and we've really, I think I've really enjoyed this campground. How about you? Yeah, these, uh, what are they, natural? Uh, state Forest. State Forest campgrounds are very nice. Uh, they're inexpensive to stay at, I think, what, eight, $18? Less than $18. Less yes. than $18 a night. Water and electric only. This they have one, a dump station. Each of them have a dump station. Right. This one is pretty small. 27 There's, sites. Right, right. Yeah. 
but it's nice it's very nice and it's in a pretty convenient location yeah the campsites are really nice I, I love the little fences they put around them all it kind of gives you a sense of privacy even though you are open to your neighbors it gives you a, a boundary I guess it's really what it does um, but the, what really is nice is that every campsite has a nice concrete slab um, which is you know which was really nice because you're not tracking all the sand in right right it's nice for the dogs and uh, there's a lot of walking paths or biking paths you can even drive on yeah. some of them some of them are actually ro you know roads considered roads they're yeah. they're very very primitive roads but we drove one of them into town um, yesterday and that was kind of neat yeah but we enjoyed them we took the dogs on many walks yeah there's a lot of walking paths and hiking trails as, through this area um, and we enjoyed hiking here yes and unfortunately we lost Monty we did yeah um, we're gonna show you some video of, of what happened with Monty on that hike we are walking along this trail this is actually trail road number nine and I was letting Monty walk he had a leash on but I was drag letting him drag the leash on the ground and I was using voice commands because the day before we did that and he did really good. He stayed right where I wanted him. He didn't get too far ahead. Hey, 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 stop. Monty, stay here. No, stay here, get closer. Hey, hey, don't get too far ahead. Stay here. Monty, stay here. Good boy, Monty. Hey, 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 you're getting a little too far ahead. Stop. Good boy. Good boy. Now, Zephyr can be let off her leash when walking her on a trail or someplace that there's not a lot of traffic. And actually, she will walk better off leash than she does on leash when she's on one of these walks. And she, she, I don't know, she pretty much trained herself or she's just learned or whatever. But uh, she does very well. And if you do tell her, stop, you say her name and just say stop. And she stops. Or if you say, come here, she'll just come back to where you are. She never gets too far ahead if she sees something and it looks like she's gonna dart off. Usually, she will stop if we tell her to stop. There really hasn't been any instance where she hasn't. In particular, we found that she does like to climb and is very good at it. Although now that she's getting a little bit older, we might have to start and be a little more careful with her. But she is, she is very good. Something we had hoped to train Monty to do. I'm not sure he'll get there, but um, he does pretty good. He stepped going a little bit further, a little bit further, a little bit further. Then finally he ran. And he got, I don't know, what would you say, Diane? 200 feet in front of us? Mm-hmm. And then he stopped. And, and we're calling him and calling him, Monty, Monty, come back here, come back here. He turns around. He walks maybe 5, 10 feet towards us. Gives us a look of mischief in his eyes, and zoom, off the road he goes, into the woods. Monty! Monty, yeah. stop! 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 After Monty ran off into the woods, we came up the trail to the point where we last saw him go in. We stopped and called for him. Monty! Monty! Monty, where are you? Monty! Come here! Come here, Monty! Ugh, he ran away. Okay. Diane saw him briefly in the woods, but then he disappeared. And that was the last we saw of him. This time, it was probably about 5 o'clock at night. Now, I'm starting to get really worried because Monty is a black dog, and it gets dark around 6 o'clock here, and if it were to get dark before we find him, 
we may not find him at all. He just disappears at night. So we had some looking to do. So finally, after about 20 minutes of him being out in the brush, we were continuously calling him, and I finally heard a rustle in the bu bushes, and I saw him. He was running actually towards Randy and towards the road. Then he decided he would take a turn and go back into the bushes. Well then, after a couple minutes, I heard him again. He came out of the bushes and he went right by me. I tried to step on his leash because he still had the leash attached. I missed it, but then he ran right to Randy. I don't know whether he got scared, maybe, as to where he was and he didn't see us, or he was just tired. <coughs> because by the time he got back to Randy, he was panting and he immediately laid down. So I'm thinking maybe it was a combination of both. He got scared and that's why he came back or um, he was just tired. So this was a real scary incident for us. And it's one of my biggest fears traveling with, with dogs is that they get loose and we can't get them to come back and something happens to them. We've been told by people who live in this area that there are coyotes in this area. And so it could have been it could have been a lot worse of an outcome. And we were lucky that we found Monty. You know, he was a little worse from where. We spent a little bit of time once we got back to the trailer brushing him out because he had pretty much everything in the woods stuck to his fur. But I think the lesson to be learned here is, for us especially, is you gotta know your dogs. I mean, we can trust Zephyr. She won't go too far. She usually stays right within with us most of the time though, I think. Sometimes if she really heard something, she probably would run off. Um, we then she would come back. But she would come back, yes. Yeah. Monty, we think he would come back, but we don't trust him as much. He's not as well trained. He doesn't have the recall. You know, when you call him, he do, he he's stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> he's a typical chow. Yeah, I always say, you know, most chows are 80% trainable and 20% stubborn. And Monty is exactly that. Zephyr's probably 90-10, but Monty's definitely the 80-20 rule. And if he gets here something out in the woods and it catches his attention, that's where he's going. And he's not going to come back until he's ready. And thankfully, you know, his age and such, he was tired and he worked his way back and we were able to find him. But some of the things that we do to make sure that if, if, ended up being a worse situation and we weren't able to find him as quickly. We have, they have tags with our phone numbers on them on their collars. Their harnesses are reflective and Monty wears an orange uh, harness because he's harder to see, especially at night. They've also been microchipped and we have cards in our truck with their picture and description on them that we could easily turn into lost dog posters or flyers if we needed to. So that's a few of the things that we do to make sure that if something like this ever happened again, you know, we can assure the best outcome if, if possible. And obviously we had the best outcome this time. We panicked for half hour or so right. that he wasn't there and what was gonna happen and how we were gonna deal with this. But thankfully he came back and we just had to brush him out He's back with us, and you know we're we're very happy. Zephyr's yeah. very happy. We we would have been devastated if we actually lost Monty. Right. But this has been a great place to camp. Um, we would definitely come back here uh, to any of the the uh, state forest campgrounds that we've been to. You know, either um, Holder Mine or uh, Silver Lake. I think they're both great campgrounds. Grounds. Silver Lake would be awesome, you know, if we had life jackets at the time right. to go kayaking. We didn't have life jackets. We uh, did get some since then, but didn't get the opportunity to go kayaking there. That would have been fun. Yep. Right, buddy.
All right, guys, hope you learned something from this. We know we did. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, Zephyr Travels. Hit that bell for notifications. We post new videos on a weekly basis, and we'd love to have you guys follow along. So until our next adventure, we will see everyone down the road. Take care, guys. Okay, see ya. bye. Say bye, Monty. No, no, don't say goodbye, Monty. No. <laughs> say hello, Monty. Hello, Zephyr. Zephyr's not paying attention. Let's not waste time or take this slow We've got miles behind us and miles to go So let's just break this down